Good morning. Welcome to your Wednesday. Welcome Wednesday. Let's talk about content again. Content. As you know, I scheduled some stuff through Hootsuite and I just want you to know that I posted a reel through Hootsuite with someone named Chris Doe. Chris Doe has over 900,000 followers on Instagram alone. That reel got two, maybe three likes, like barely, barely cracked a hundred views. I myself, I have 2700 followers it doesn't add up i'm telling you instagram hates all of these all of these platforms hate when you use a third party to post your stuff these youtube shorts that i posted on the podcast channel i'm gonna check them right now but i'm pretty sure ever since i started posting through hootsuite on here there's one view one view six views no views 10 views five views and these these have people in them that chris doe has 2.2 million subs on youtube nathan has like 100k or more it sucks it sucks bad because having to do that all by hand takes so long but there's like not really any other option if no one's ever going to see the edits and the posts that you put out there so there you go that's how we're that's how we're starting this welcome wednesday welcome wednesday another interesting start to a morning the disputed payment went through and they, they took all the funds and just gave it right back to her. I hear that Amex is notorious for that. They'll hunt you down and just pull funds. Like the Stripe the transaction, the person that facilitates the transaction, they pretty much said credit card companies by law force them to like pull the funds out no matter what. And if they win a dispute and you don't have money in your bank account, they'll just take it from all of your future transactions really blows but now i'm i'm left with a moral dilemma because what do i do here do i respond to the client and say hey you screwed me over a little bit there do i go in and remove all the work that we did that she didn't pay for because her podcasts are posting publicly every week and there's still four that we did for her um, that are going up do i remove those do i let it go do i go to small claims court this is un uncharted territory for me. Just because of the size of the transaction, I think more so. If it was smaller, it's like you get screwed, you know, it's part of doing business. But something like this where it's like a whole month's worth of work getting screwed out of, that's tough. That's hard to let go. I paid all I paid everybody on my my team. I paid them out of my pocket now. And that's not it's not easy to do financially, not morally happy to pay them. Sucks. That's where we're at. Gonna do the classic. Two hash browns, two eggs, cheese, a little bit of Greek yogurt to get the day going. Turn it back on its head, get things going right. And then we're editing a podcast right now. Uh, it's, the pod, it's the episode with Travis Chapel. So you'll see this. By the time you see this, it'll already be out, I'm pretty sure. So check it out. Hopefully the edit's good. One more thought on the editing of the podcast. These are the kinds of tasks that I need to delegate more so. But now that some financial hiccups have happened, it's difficult to. Because the reason I say that is because my time how I see my role in my own company is I should be the one going out and getting business and spending time attempting to make things monetizable and bring in cash and tasks like this should be outsourced so I have the time to do it. Because if I spend four hours today doing this, that's four hours I could have been doing outreach to potential clients, you know? So whatever you're saying yes to, you're saying no to something else and this one is is costly i think i'm at the point where i don't need the creative control the style is kind of already set it's just a matter of passing it off to someone else general thoughts what do you think lay it on me if said client did not pay for four episodes they disputed the payment and they got their money back am i entitled to delete those episodes am i entitled to it because i own them because they were not paid for would this cause further tension cause potential legal battle which I feel like I could go to small claims court now over this. What's the moral ethical line? Is it better to let it go? But then they're utilizing things they didn't pay for. How do you see it? I'm curious. What's your perspective? Comment down below your perspective and what you would do. Mixing it up though. Mixing it up through a whole avocado in this wig right here. What's going on everyone? We are currently driving to Irvine, California, which is also known as the OC. OC moms, where they at though? Don't forget, there are some moms that live in Orange County. I'm actually thinking of the Desperate Housewives, I think. Anywho, I wanted to follow up on our conversation earlier. I think the best move forward right now, I'm about 98.5% certain. I'm just gonna shoot the client an email, say, hey, saw that you didn't pay for any of this stuff. No worries, cut ties, we're done. Just leave, leave it be. Anything else is gonna become a time suck. I'm gonna lose energy over it and that's the way things go from time to time. Also, I feel like this is a good time to talk about how to respond to 
negative things that happen. I'm gonna eject this. Like when something doesn't go right or when something goes awry, such as this. This has happened frequently, not this in particular. Well, there has been a few times where I've been too trusting of, of clients or people that are supposed to pay me. However, the point I'm trying to make is, I think lately my mindset toward things that don't go as they're supposed to or as anticipated, I kind of chuck that into the thought process that good things in life are gonna happen and bad things are gonna happen. Therefore, when they do, don't be surprised. Like there's no reason to be shocked or caught off guard by these things. It's just something that's bound to happen, so take care of it. That's what I've been thinking of most recently. I'm not sure if I explained that the best, but such is life, such is life. There, I mean, there's ups and there's downs, and even if you take a look at what happened yesterday, like going to, uh, going to dinner, hanging out with friends, that's all good stuff, and then you wake up the next day, clients disputing your payment, and they won, they got their all their money back, you did all this work, but then tomorrow, I'm going to Disneyland, you know, it's like, life continues there's 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 no stop in life and there's no stop in time so might as well pull them up by the bootstraps mark get out there and get down do a minute and all that. i hope that provides some insights and i hope that's the right move taking the high ground and say you're gonna have to live with yourself for what you've done me i'm chilling i'm big chilling also we gotta get a lift in today it's gonna be difficult because the podcast still needs to be edited only the first half is edited this drive is taking two and a half hours, so that's two and a half hours out of the day. New space, gotta get the dog set up, all this all this stuff, so. Uh, fingers crossed I can, I can get a workout in. I definitely need to get a run in because it was raining yesterday, so. I just know that it's good. Yeah. It's quite compatible. Mm. It's easily adaptable. Yes. And it's just easy to use. It's the mm. go-to product. <laughs> the USB-C, the, everything just works out so nicely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just flows. Flows. There you go. There you go. What is going on? Welcome. It has been a doozy of the past 12 plus hours, 18 plus hours. Last night, these cars are flying by. Last night, I got probably three hours of sleep maximum. Our girl here, Poppy, uh, she got blindsided, attacked by fleas, telling her cars are going nutty. So she was just itching all night, just itching and scratching. We got her some flea medicine today though. There's so much mud. It's slid in mud. Oh. Oh. We are 2.2 miles in. Hopefully this isn't a jump scare. Straight to sweat. I regret wearing this sweatshirt. It's a million degrees out here. <coughs> Pick up where we left off. Poppy was blindsided by fleas. She was itching and scratching all night. Didn't get any sleep, but I bring that up because on those days where you don't get enough sleep and you are tired, it proves, or it's a, it's a testament or even a display of where your mindset is actually at in regards to, and this may come off corny, on where you are in the champion's mindset. It's like, because anybody can follow their diet when they have energy. Anybody can get a run in when they have energy. They're well, they're well slept. Anybody can stick to their word when they're not fatigued. But when you are fatigued, that's when the discipline shows whether you have it or not. And I'm not saying that to say, look at me, I'm on a run. I'm just saying it to you if you're thinking, Hey, I'm a little tired today. Prove yourself, you're a champion. Every doubt you have in your mind about yourself, you can disprove yourself. <sighs> Moving on, I feel like I, I beat that dead horse hard. I beat it with a tennis racket. The second thing to bring up is on uh, days like these, where I'm visiting family, and I'm sure you experienced this too, it's harder to get things done. It's like uh, a little more hectic. So when these things happen, I think it shows something to us as well. I'm gonna crank out probably another mile before I tell you. We did it. The perfect loop. 
exactly four miles, exactly where I started. Oh man, peep the stats, peep them. Now it's time to hit arms, thighs and tries, maybe a little bit of shoulders. Just a tad bit though. Primary focus on thighs and tries. <clears throat> it's gonna be at a gym, so don't expect to see any footage of that. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. We have an honest and transparent relationship, so that's what I'm telling you. What I was mentioning earlier was on days where it's crazy hectic, you know, I got family, got things running around, or maybe it's just like a busy social day, you know, juggling things. What shows is where your priorities lie in regards to your work slash career because when you only have a limited amount of time two three maybe four hours the tasks you choose to do show what you believe is the highest priority there's some things that are on fire but a lot of times it can either be work that you know you can finish quickly so you feel good that you did something but it doesn't really push the needle or it can be high priority tasks which in most of the cases you want your at least uh, my strategy your checklist shouldn't be bigger than three things a day so when you have limited time that should be even knocked down further so you can do the most important task. But I'm walking in, by finished smashing arms. Felt great, felt great. I did uh, one, two, three sets of buys, three sets of tries, and then one set of shoulders, and then a little hammer curl pour out. It's great. When I say sets, I mean three sets of one exercise. So, do the best. What I was talking about earlier about the uh, choosing the right task, I say that because I think today I spent most of my time replying to emails and responding to messages that needed to be responded to, but definitely are not the highest priority task. It's good to reassess, you know? 